Let's process a roll of film together. You're gonna start with your tank. Inside the tank is the reel post and the roll of film that you've put on the reel. This should not be exposed to light, so there's a red safety lid on top. That's optional. Chemicals are gonna go in through the top and pour out through the little notches in the top of the lid. You're going to start with D76 developer. This is the part that makes the image show up on the roll of film. I'm gonna start with a cylinder and I'm going to use 10 ounces of D76 developer. D76 developer is sensitive to temperature. The developer should be 76 degrees. So I'm gonna take a thermometer, I'm gonna place it inside the developer, and I'm going to let this breed. Now this developer happens to be fresh, I just mixed it earlier, and I mixed it with warm water. So my developer is actually 82 degrees. To warm up the developer, or to cool down the developer, you can get a gallon bucket from under the sink, place it in the sink, and then you're gonna use either cool or warm water to basically cool or warm the cylinder of developer. I'm gonna place my cylinder in my bucket and I'm gonna run water over this cylinder inside of the sink. Because my developer is too warm, I'm gonna use cold water. But if your developer was too cold, you could use warm water. developer is at 76 degrees, it's ready to go. I'm going to grab a timer and I'm going to make sure that it is ready to go. All right, so here we go. Developer is the first step and you use developer for eight minutes. I have a little cheat sheet over here on the counter if you ever forget. I'm going to pour in the developer into the center of the top of my tank, put the red safety lid on, and I'm going to start my timer. I'm going to watch my timer for the next eight minutes. I'm going to agitate this or rock it back and forth gently every 30 seconds or so to make sure the film is getting completely covered with my developer. You can very gently tap this developer container onto this, the counter to help lift any air bubbles. So I'm gonna set my timer down for a second. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my cylinder. And I'm gonna get the next step ready. My next step is stop bath. This stops the developer from working. So we use indicator stop bath. Indicator stop bath tells us when it's expired or exhausted. Stop bath should be this lovely yellow color. If the stop bath is bad, which means it's got too much fixer mixed into it, stop bath actually turns purple. Okay, so this is bad stop bath. If the stop bath is bad, we're going to dump out the gallon and we're going to mix new stop bath. The stop bath is bad when the entire gallon is purple, not when it comes out of your tank purple, because when it comes out of your tank, it has some, some developer mixed in with it already, so it's not technically bad. So I'm going to pour 10 ounces of developer into my cylinder, or uh, stop bath into my cylinder. And I'm actually going to get a funnel ready because we reuse stop bath over and over again. 
I'm going to continue watching my timer and I'm just going to agitate this every 30 seconds or so and I'm going to do that for eight minutes. I'm at two minutes now, so I'll see you guys in eight minutes. All right, we made it to eight minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump this down the drain. We only use developer one time. We wanna make sure that it's working at its full strength, so we only use it once. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my stop bath. Stop bath is 30 seconds, so I can start my timer or I can just count to 30. And it's agitation the entire time. So I'm gonna agitate this the whole time. I'm just rolling it back and forth to make sure the stop back touches every part of the film. We're halfway there. All right, 30 seconds. Stop back goes back into the bottle. Remember, we use it over and over again until the entire bottle turns purple. I'm rinsing my funnel. I'm gonna put my stop bath away. I'm getting fixer next. I'm gonna rinse out my cylinder. All right, our timer is almost up. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get my next step ready. The cheat sheet over here says that my next step is orbit bath. Orbit bath, um, just like the fixer, has two bottles. There is a fresh orbit bath and a used orbit bath. I'm gonna go ahead and use fresh. 10 ounces again. And then I'm going to find the used Orbit Bath bottle from when I'm done with that. So my timer is at eight minutes. So I'm going to stop it, reset it, pour my used fixer into the used fixer bottle. I'm going to put my used fixer away, rinse my funnel, and get this ready to put my Orbit Bath in. Orbit bath is 30 seconds of continuous agitation. So I'm gonna pour this in. I've started my timer. And I'm just gonna rock this back and forth for 30 seconds. Orbit bath is basically cleaning the film. It's removing all of the residue from the fixer. After 30 seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and pour my now used Orbit bath into the used bottle. I'm going to rinse my funnel and I'm going to put this Orbit bath away. The next step is to rinse my film with water. At this point we're almost done. So I can go ahead and open up my film canister my developing tank and you can see my film is in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this under the cool water and I'm gonna let a gentle stream of water run over the top of my film container. I'm gonna do this for five minutes. In that five minutes, I'm gonna make sure I pick up my developing stuff and I'll kind of stop you in a second to give you um, something else that you're gonna need to do. So you'll see me cleaning up my area, washing my hands, cleaning up the tank, um, all of that good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and get my last step ready today. 
The last step is photo flow. Photo flow is kind of like a spot free rinse for your film. It helps eliminate all of the little water spots that you might get on your film because those are really hard to clean off when it's time to go in the dark room. I'm going to use 10 ounces just like the rest of the steps. All right, it's been five minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and do photo flow. Photo flow is 30 seconds of constant agitation. So I'm gonna pour in my photo flow, rinse my cylinder, and then I'm just gonna kind of gently switch this photo flow around in the canister for 30 seconds. You don't want to swish this kind of vigorously because uh, photo flow is very sudsy and um, it makes little bubbles as you swish it around. So try not to swish it around too much. I'm going to dump that out when I'm done with it. Then the next thing I need is a tiny little piece of paper towel. On this piece of paper towel, you are going to write your name. You're going to write your name and your hour. You're going to write your name and your hour on this little piece of paper towel. You also then need two clothespins. These are my high tech film hanging devices. One of them will have a paper clip attached to it, the other will not. These are going to help you hang your film in the cabinet. Now, when you take your film out of the tank, you can take the little post off. You can see that this doesn't look the same as it used to. You're going to hold this flat ledge towards you, hold tight in your left hand, push forward with your right hand, and these two pieces come out. You're gonna unravel your film and you can see I've got, I've got photos on my negatives. This is success. I'm gonna use my finger squeegee and I am going to just squeegee all of the excess liquid off of my film. So I can see that I have some pictures on my roll of film. This was a success. This end right here, this is your leader, this is what you feed into the camera, and this is why it's black, because you expose this when you feed it into the camera. I'm going to take my little piece of paper towel that says my name and my hour. I'm going to attach them together with the paper clip, um, the clothespin with the paper clip attached. On the other side, I am going to attach my other clothespin, and this is going to help it hang straight to dry. You don't want to set this down on any um, surfaces. You want to kind of touch it as little as possible except with your finger squeegees because you don't want to get any dust, dirt, um, hair, you know, extra oil from your skin on this film while it's drying. I'm now going to take this roll of film over to the red negative cabinet and I'm going to hang it to dry until next class. Now that my film is all hanging to dry, I need to clean up my area. I'm gonna go ahead and hang up my timer. If you're on the short side, have somebody do it for you. And then I'm gonna rinse and dry all of my tank pieces. When you're putting the reels back together, Make sure you put them back together so that the ledges line up so the next person to process film doesn't have a hard time with this. It's important that you wash and dry out your tanks because somebody in the next hour will likely be using them and it's really a pain to put your film on the reel when the tank is wet. Make sure you rinse it, dry it, put all the pieces back together, and you can just leave it sitting on the shelf like this. You don't have to screw this on tight so air can circulate in there and it can dry even more. 
Um, but make sure you have all the pieces together and then you can just put your tanks back up on the shelf. When all of your chemical bottles are put away, your whole sink area is cleaned up. Make sure you are washing your hands before you go on to your next class so you don't take any of the gross chemicals with you and to make sure you keep photography's germs in photography. So I'm going to go ahead and just give the sink one more wipe down. I'm going to close these cabinet doors. And I'm going to pick up my roll of film um, out of the drying cabinet next class.